No. no. So this is it. So it is 630. Is it? Yeah. Ready. No. 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 Oh. Tommy, you join up? No, he's taking his barb to the hospital. Hey, mm -hmm. Isaac. Hello. Hi there. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm all right. Thanks. Make sure. Oh, good. Hi. <laughs> Um, all right, do we have any need to amend the agenda this evening? Um, just that other warrant. Oh, right, we're adding the warrant of $3,048.14. So do I have a motion to adopt the uh, agenda as amended? Motion. Second. Second. <laughs> all Thank you, Joe. Aye. 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 I got to wake up here. <laughs> yeah, you got to pay attention I now. <laughs> I'm important tonight. <laughs> I know. Muy importante. All right. Anything of the meeting minutes of February 7th? I saw nothing of note. No. All right. Town manager's report. All righty. Um, attended the Chittenden Reservoir Emergency Action Plan meeting on February 14th. There was discussion on sheltering and vulnerable population needs during a dam breach of the Chittenden Dam. Um, they've updated the inundation maps. Uh, to include areas of Otter Creek Corridor up to the Cooley Bridge. So part of Proctor and Pittsburgh weren't in those at the time, so they've adjusted those. And they're having a siren test on May 14th, so oh, okay. um, I'll let you know. And there, there's a <coughs> minutes to the meeting attached here, too. Um, Alicia and I attended the legislative breakfast in Rutland on February 12th. Uh, State Treasurer was there. The main he was the main presenter, and the hot topic of the day was the proposed <laughs> education tax. Shocker! <laughs> and it's on the governor's desk as of today. Yep. Um, Chad and I attended a DMV seminar on road postings and weight limits um, on the 15th. It's a good refresher for both of us on following the proper procedures when posting roads and bridges for weight limits. And we also had a discussion on spring road postings, which are in our pack here, <coughs> and and what how they're properly posted so they can be enforced. Um, attached to my report is a quote for the Bobcat Zero Term Moor, which we briefly discussed at a meeting or two ago. Um, the price is $4,750. Um, we've got $2,700 left in the mowing budget, and um, we have line for, for outside maintenance for $2,000 um, in the water department. So just wanted to... <coughs> Let you guys know that um, there's a picture of it in here and stuff. And if there's any questions on it, we do not have a more. We have a w old <coughs> walk behind, a 36 inch walk behind that someone they got for the disc golf course. That's oh. it. Oh, is oh. it being used? They use it for the disc golf. It's up by rack, but it's it's just a 36 inch walk behind. So, um, oh. any more is questions? Is it in the garage? Where is it? I don't know if I've ever seen it. up there. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this will be our third mower. This is a mower for the. This is a this is a mower mower. Department. This is Z-term mower. So because we're we're not going to do a, we're not going to contract the mowing. So this would be the guys to do with like wastewater and mm -hmm. the town stuff and the village green and all the other areas. The sign, the welcome signs. So it should save well, us money in the long term. If they run into trouble with just one mower, they can probably work a deal with the rec area or something to yeah. tide them over. And we could figure something out, yeah. You'd almost ought to have a backup more, <coughs> right? But being that hey the there. rec area has <coughs> more. So, right. so, you know, it should save us money because we won't be contracting that every year and the guys right. have time to do it. <coughs> if it don't work out, they can go back to the old system. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I did add on that's not on this one is um, Chief Hempel came to me on the fire department. The fire department, the host company, has a 1960 fire truck that has sat in the garage up at Omia for, well, it hasn't been registered since 2018. And they just, they wanted to just let you guys know that they're hoping to try to sell this thing because it, it, it hasn't moved in six years. So it is registered and owned by the host company. Um, so was that the truck on site, or is that just an old truck? No, this is an no. There's two trucks up there. There's this is an there. old one. Okay. This over in Florence. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it, yeah. we're hoping when that goes, we'll move the boom mobile up there so that PD can have mm. more room in the garage here. That boom mobile was never supposed to be out here. I don't know if you don't know that, but I do. That was 
when that garage was built, that was for the police department and the rec area to store their yep. equipment in the wintertime so it wouldn't be vandalized over there. And the boomobile found its way in there somehow. It's pretty tight in there. So um, Bill just wanted me to let you know that. Who so is out of place? We'll leave, that it that, leave it at that. Yeah, I think the hose company is voting on it Friday. I think they have a meeting. So. Okay. Um, oh, and then I have Good idea. just some quick rec stuff. Um, Liz, Liz, poor Liz, she's been out sick this week. I didn't, mm -hmm. um, uh, Vermont Soccer Association is sponsoring a free soccer program for Lothrop students through third through sixth grades. Um, two spring disc golf tournaments coming, uh, one to benefit American Cancer Society and the other is part of Women's National League. Uh, community work days are being planned for the disc golf course and hiking trail systems and um, Liz is organizing volunteers to assist so if you know anyone that wants to pitch in. And Pittsburgh Townwide Yard Sale will be on June 8th. Registrations available at myrec.com. I think that's all I have tonight. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, any select board member remarks? <laughs> kind of low on the select board members this evening. <laughs> Want to go first, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you. No, you can start. <laughs> you have anything, Joe? Well, I, I, when the orders come up, oh, I, okay, but yeah, I, it's not time for that. Okay. Yep. Um. Just a little bit. Um, it came to my attention that there might be a desire for an excavator to be purchased for the highway department. And I think if that's something that they really do think they need, that we should make sure we have it in next year's budget or at least mm -hmm. plan for it if that is the case. So we do have it in the capital fund for equipment replacement and highway, which I can I can give you the numbers for the next meeting. So there's I think there's 200 and something thousand. <coughs> For the capital, the equipment fund for highway. All right. Well, if I think <coughs> we probably should spend some time reviewing yep. that and see if it does need to be in there. We should at least plan ahead yep. so it's not sprung on us at some point. Mm -hmm. But I think if they need it, would we still keep our backhoe? Well, the backhoe discussion is coming up. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, right. That's more to come on that. That is on the agenda. So we'll. But we'll I do think if that's something we got to look <clears> at, then um, at least in our next session of budgeting, we should make sure that yeah. we right. keep that in our yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Yep. I don't want to just pull it out, but I think we should at least keep it in our thoughts. Good idea. And I do think that if if there's a possibility for a good used one, I think we should <clears> consider <throat> that higher than mm -hmm. just buying a new one. There seem to be plenty of good used options right. available, and you know, as long as we have plenty of time to think about it and look about it, right. know, easily put the word out. We should budget it yep. in whenever it comes. Okay, that's all I have. I'll let you know what's in that equipment fund too. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. Well, I have something I would like to say. So, um, other than town meeting, this is Joe's last meeting after 20 years. <laughs> So, and I'm not sure, I'm hoping this is still a surprise. I don't know if you know that we dedicated, you are one of the dedications in the town report for this uh, year. So. <laughs> that, that doesn't, I don't know as I deserve that. You do. So oh, just, God, yeah. I know. So I just want to, I wanted to just read this, okay? okay. Thank you. So, uh, Joe, go, Joe grew up on the family dairy farm on Cornhill Road here in Pittsburgh on land that has been in his family since 1880. Joe was interested in more than farming and after helping a local mill owner cut and sell some logs, thought it might be something he'd like to continue doing. After buying equipment from a mill that was for sale in Whiting, he set up the mill on the farm and started cutting wood in 1958. For years, Joe farmed and worked the sawmill, but in 1979, when his son Ken came home from college, they began to run the mill full time. Joe, one of the hardest workers around, still found time to serve Pittsburgh. He was a surveyor of wood from 1971 to 1990, selectman from 2003 to present, as well as fence viewer from 2007 to present. So thank you, Joe, for all your service to the town throughout the years. And it was a pleasure. Right. pleasure. That's all for coming to you. <laughs> so Joe, how many fences have you viewed? <laughs> you know, there's only been two or three <laughs> occasions Oh. Well, I was surveyor of timber and wood for a long time, and then somehow or other, Linwood Bovey was, uh, he was on there for uh, fence viewer, and then I got switched over somehow <laughs> or other <laughs> to fence viewer, and Jack Fox and, Lin and Frank Bovey were on there. 
Well, both of them have passed on now. You're saying you've outlived I don't know both. if I've got any help or not, or if I'm all alone on that. Oh, no, 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 you have help. Mills was put on, then I was put on. So, so we are got oh. three fence viewers. We're in great shape. That. I haven't done a fence yet. <laughs> I mean, we only had one or two cases <laughs> where there's never been much activity in that department. <laughs> And I only say that because we ribbed you about that as long as I can remember. So, <laughs> so thank you, Joe. Well, it's a pleasure. I, I really have mixed feelings about quitting, but uh, yeah. oh, I've developed some health problems that's got my concern, and so I'm figured while well, I can walk out, I better walk out than have them carry me out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Yes, uh, thanks, Joe. I appreciate you. <laughs> it. It's a pleasure working on this board. Yeah. All right, do we have any public comment tonight? No? Oh, Actually, yeah. Um, I had a question. Maybe you might be able to answer it. I was hoping Tommy would be here, but of course he's not. How prepared are we as a town for a mass casualty incident. Oh. Are you guys discussing that in the uh, emergency man manage like or is a, that like a hurricane for or something like no, that? No, I'm talking about like somebody goes and shoots up the Dollar General oh. or oh. a church attack or the trains go boom. So I, I know that <clears throat> Police department's done quite a few of those trainings, yep. Joe. I'm not sure what the fire department's done for mass casualty, but they do a lot of scenarios for active shooter and stuff with the police departments. Um, I could certainly ask Chief Warfel about police, that and Chief Hempel. And yeah, the police and, have done some. Yeah, there's been quite a, a lot of that fire lately. I don't know for fire, though. I, I'm certainly that's a good question, that. Joe. Yep. Mm. Yeah, because, I mean, with everything that's going on, you know, uh, there's a very good possibility that we could be affected and, you know. Okay. Just something, <laughs> how are we as a town? Right, right. Um, yeah, that's the a other fair question. Yep. The other question that I had the old hemp farm on Whipple Hollow Road, I was looking at it, and it said it was approved by the town for expansion. Where? Anybody? Greenhouses over on Whipple Hollow, where they. Well, that's in West Rowland, isn't it? Is it West Rowland? It's listed as I Pittsburgh. Th I thought it was in. I thought it was part in Pittsburgh. Uh, I think it's it. listed as Pittsburgh on the sale. Hmm. Is it past? Um, I, is it what's that one last road that goes to the right, right before Cressy's old dairy barn? That's like where South the Cressy's. So, yeah. yeah. That, that's got to be West Rowland. The town line is clear up top of the hill. This I saw it north of Cressy's. So I thought some land must be in Pittsburgh. Uh, so then maybe they need to change their listing because it's listed maybe. as Pittsburgh. And my, or yeah. actually, Pittsburgh no, I code, think though. it's listed as Florence. Yeah, it probably has oh. that zip code. That's why. Because Cressy, I don't think, is oh. Pittsburgh. So mm. He's right beyond it. That, so. that is West Rock. Huh? Yeah. Not that it makes any difference. Yeah. Maybe. No, but you wouldn't know what the well, right. so we expansion don't know, yeah. approval would be. So. Right. right. <laughs> that that was yeah, I would think if that was us, it would have come to the zoning board and everything right. so yeah i would have heard something about I think it Joe's right i think it is past the town line is there anything going on over there now or is it it's for sale i see i believe or lease and i was looking at possibly opening up a hobby shop over there with outdoor tracks and such is it work so wrong? i was just you know because i mean i'm thinking about possibly having people who come for a race bring their rvs and you know hmm. so i didn't know what kind of expansion <coughs> was approved by the right, town. I know okay. it's about 10 acres over there. Mm. That started out, they were raising tomatoes there, if I remember right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was hydroponics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they went to uh, hemp. Well, that kind of. Yeah. And then it has been sitting empty for the past couple of years. Yeah. I know it's listed for sale, and it, it's listed as Florence, I believe. So I figured yeah, okay. you guys were the ones, but I guess not. Yes, yeah. Then, in that case, that trail that I was talking about that the camper was parked at was also West Rutland because that trail oh. is just beyond. It's the Whipple Hollow Trail, I think it's called. Okay. I've never, I don't know where that is specifically. Like, if you know the uh, place I'm talking about, the farm, mm -hmm. I think northeast, mm -hmm. not northeast cannabis, but northeast something or other. 
It's on the left-hand side if you're going out towards uh, West Rot. Okay. Just north of that, there's a little short street that goes out in there. And that used to be, a, years ago, Jim Harrison lived out in there. It was a little farm, and there, he had a sawmill there one time. But uh, there's a road, there's a cemetery up mm -hmm. over in there, too, on that little road. And, and if you go out that little road and kind of keep to the left, I've had a truck back in there, three quarters of a mile, drawing logs out of there. It might get you back into the town of Pittsford, but... Uh, it's one of those middle of nowhere kind of places. It's probably West Rot. <laughs> I know. That's, that's Our place right. is listed as both <clears throat> Pittsford and Florence, where we live on oh, Fire Hill Road. Pretty sure Cliff Cressy was West Rot one. I know yeah. his land was in West Rot one. Well, when you come by Cressy's, you kind of come up onto a hill, mm -hmm. and just as you break over that hill and head down, that's the town line. line is right so that's, there. That's, yeah, that's West Rot one. Mm -hmm. I can actually see a Pavement, a pavement line change from where the town's paved at different times. Oh. Sometimes it's noticeable, but yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a town line marker on the no, side of the road. Yeah, I, I believe there's a road sign. I it think says so. Pittsford and then right. West Rot. Yeah. Just don't remember where exactly it is. Yep, okay. All right, um, we have no old business. So let's move on to new business. Uh, Pittsford Village Farm, public hearing, loan closeout. So Isaac Wagner is on <coughs> remote and a couple folks in the back here from the village farm. Yeah. So um, okay. I guess you want Isaac to I take know. it away or? Yeah, he can introduce yeah. it. <laughs> it's all yours, Isaac. Okay, you guys hear me all right? Yes. Yep, yeah, good. Um, well, thank you. You're, uh, you're probably wondering, uh, didn't we just have a hearing <laughs> about this? Um, and in fact, we, did, we sort of did uh, with each CDBG grant and this is kind of nationwide um, you have to do a hearing upon application and then you have to do a hearing upon closeout um, the last hearing we did was an application for the next cdbg grant um, this is the closeout for the first cdbg grant you got um, so the first one was a planning grant so sixty thousand dollar planning grant to assist with uh, the pittsburgh village farm uh, to cover mainly uh, uh, pre-development uh, design and environmental expenses uh, related to developing the farmhouse into child care and housing mm -hmm. um, when you start doing when you start using the level of federal grants and federal financing that we've used that we're using on this project uh, the, so the due diligence gets really high and the, and the project costs go up and so this planning grant was intended to offset <coughs> some of the costs for that so we've indeed spent it all. In fact, um, and if is Anne in the room somewhere there? No. 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 Well, David, uh, we, you should be getting the last uh, deposit uh, from the state. Um, should be arriving tomorrow on the bank account. So we'll keep. Uh, I'll contact mm -hmm. you okay. tomorrow to keep a look at that. So the um, this Road Village Farm has incurred the expenses. We've invoiced the town. The town has drawn the grant. To its fullest extent, we've done what we said we were going to do, and we've paid uh, what we said we were going to pay out. So, uh, uh, the particular issue on this, uh, the particular thing that this helped us with, was the environmental due diligence, which is really high with federal grants. Um, so we hired environmental consultant, we hired an architect, uh, we had project manager. Uh, we had a bunch of individual expenses, all of which have been shared with Ann. So Ann and David, they, they have the whole ledger of what we paid for. Um, so uh, this is a hearing that provides an opportunity for the public to comment or ask questions. Um, and, uh, and certainly I want to allow the uh, Pittsburgh Village Farm representatives in the room, if they have any further comment, uh, uh, please be sure. But please pipe in uh, but in the meantime um, I'd just like to leave it open for questions from the public of the select board anybody have any questions the only thing I'd like to add is <coughs> thank you very much to the town to be in the intermediary on this grant and helping us get these funds and 
with our planning and our architect costs and, and thank you also for the, the next grant coming up and we're looking forward to hopefully getting construction started before the end of this year. Okay. I have a couple questions. Who is the architect for your project? It's um, Duncan Visnevsky out of uh, South Burlington. I was going to say not local then. Yeah, out well, of South Burlington. Our way, uh, Michael Visnevsky is the project architect. Who's the project manager? Well, I'm on the chair of the building committee right now, so I'm pretty much managing the various... Oh, I thought he said he hired a project manager. That's Isaac's, Isaac's help is our development consultant. Yeah, it was basically ter Terry and I manage it together. Uh, the part of the grant pay for my services, you know, a portion of the grant that you just got to pay for my services on this. Okay, I was just confused. I, I heard who you hired for it. I was just wondering who that was. So there's no real project manager. It's just between the group. Not yet. We plan to put it out to bid to contractors. And then there'll be a project manager. Oh, from the contractor that gets the yeah. bid then. Okay. Yes. Right. So the way, I mean, the way we've sort of organically worked this is I'm the project manager with respect to grants management, managing these grants, applying for it, managing these grants. Uh, Terry is our herder of cats, mm -hmm. and he's the one that keeps our development team on track and moving forward uh, on the project. That's how we've. But but I guess as Terry pointed out, once we get a general contractor on board, then then it changes into something more recognizable. I think uh, you'll have a okay. uh, a project manager that is uh, that is hired and employed by the general contractor on the project. Do you have a project engineer as well? Under yeah, the ironically, I see Robert Clark's number. Uh, Otter Creek Engineering is our is our uh, civil engineer on the site, and we have a couple of other uh, firms that are taking a role in uh, mechanical and electrical as well. Okay. Engineering Engineering Services of Vermont is mechanical electrical. They're from Rutland, um, so it's mostly local engineers. Okay. I don't have any questions. Anybody else? I don't think so. No, great. Well, um, well I, uh, I'll just echo Terry's comments. Thank you very much for your support. It's been very, very critical and helpful, and um, and um, I just have I have a really good time working with the staff. I think uh, you have a really good staff there in the office, and it's been really helpful to. Um, to push those through. So. Great. Well, thank you very much. We all done a set with that. Thanks, Isaac. All right, guys. Well, if uh, you're done with me, I'll, yeah, I think I'll that's it. All right. <laughs> Have a good night. Take care. Yep. Bye. Okay. Oh, gosh, I'm just not gonna <laughs> All right, so um, I guess now we have our Plains Road sewer presentation. So Robert Clark is here from Otter Creek Engineering. Um, I do have the plans that he sent to us um, in your packet. Mm -hmm. We do have to look at uh, continuing engineer services for bid and construction phase, and they do have their, their ASR in here for that. <coughs> um, and then just a small set of the plans. They're pretty simple. Um, we're hoping to get this out to bid tomorrow. Actually. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, you know, get, so we can get contractors lined up. It's a great time to get bids out. So, okay. Um, are you with us, Robert? I am. Can you hear me? Okay. I've been yeah. having some trouble. I'm out of town right now. So. Oh, uh, we can hear you okay right now. That, that's perfect. I apologize. I couldn't be there to meet you all in person. So, unfortunately, I'm down in Kentucky for work. <laughs> actually. Hmm. Um, so I, uh, Dave and Sean had asked me to kind of come here and, and maybe be available to answer some questions. Es essentially the scope of the project is actually a uh, replacement of about uh, 3,800 feet of um, sewer main which had been identified for replacement um, in part due to the amount of uh, infiltration that's been coming in. You know, that, that ends up reducing the overall capacity of the wastewater plant. It, impacts your downstream pump stations and it's been um you know my understanding is that it's been a priority project for the town of Pittsburgh for a number of years and unfortunately there's just there's always something that has to 
has to happen, so it hasn't happened quite yet. Um, but we think there's an opportunity um, to move forward, and there's been some interest locally from some of the local contractors. You know, there's there's an abundance of state and federal money available, but a lot of the projects that are being funded through that really haven't moved forward. So I get hmm. a few calls a week uh, from some local contractors kind of asking when we might have projects coming out to bid, so it could be a good time for, for the town to go out to bid. I will say that the... Um, that the pricing is still a lot higher than it would have been four years ago. You know, we, uh, unfortunately, I, I've seen pretty much the pricing almost double in the last four years, and it's stayed pretty consistent, um, you know, over the last six to nine months. I think the estimate that I provided is a good estimate. We had some recent bid results. Um, as Dave mentioned, it's a relatively straightforward project. We're off the road. We should have, uh, for the most part, we should have minimal impacts to, to residences and, and traffic. And um, so hopefully we'll get a really good competitive bid if that's the direction that you all would like to go. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, you said uh, this is pretty straightforward. There's no real concerns you have along this shot of doing this? Yeah. Yeah, we, um, we've completed some on-site investigation. We actually recently went out a, a couple weeks ago and we hired a camera company to come through and camera the sewer so we could identify more of the sewer services. We had a hard time getting older records on where some of that information was, so we, we tried to limit the amount of unknowns that we would have on the project. Um, and in the estimate, I've, I've carried uh, you know um, a little bit of contractor time to be able to dig up and um, exploratory for some of the unknown service locations because there's a couple we couldn't quite identify where they were. Uh, but in general, I think it's a, a fairly straightforward project. We don't expect any significant problems with it. And the infiltration you mentioned, is that coming in from water seeping in or just the age of the pipe that's there? Where is it coming in from? My understanding is it's coming in through several of the failed joints up through there. There's a lot of pipe that's um, either wasn't completely constructed the right way. I don't. I don't want to say that, but there's some there's some bad joints up there, and there's um, some areas where the water's coming in. Sean, if he's, the, I, I can't see everybody in the room. I don't know if Sean's there. No, he's not. Um, he kind of indicated that it's it, it's somewhat seasonal. You know, to me that that depending on what's going on that year and where the water table's at and stuff like that, they'll see a lot higher levels, which is pretty indicative of leaking pipe joints. And um, I don't want to say it's the age of it because it's a relatively newer section of sewer. Um, it, ha it has had some other replacements done in the past, but I think um, some of it is older and um, and there were clearly some, some problems when we cameraed it. I'm guessing this looks like pretty easy digging then, right, through here? Sand. We were hoping, sand. Yeah. It's all sand. That's what that's what everybody's told me that where they've dug up there. It's all yeah. sand and should be relatively easy digging. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, no ledge to fight with. Robert, wasn't there an issue with the pitch on the line too that it wasn't really? That was the that was the major thing. So thank yeah. you for reminding me that, Dave. So that um, the existing line is uh, for a lot of it is really really flat and shallow. It's uh, less than the design slope that we would target right now, mm -hmm. which is problematic in part because there's not that many houses on it as you work your way back up the road. So the new design, what's shown on those plans, reflects putting the line at the appropriate slope so that we won't have any uh, of the issues that we've had related to the fact that it's just too flat in some areas. <coughs> the other thing is it, it realigns a little bit of that infrastructure down by the dollar store um, so that when the state project comes through that it can all kind of tie in right there and, and oh. move on to so um, okay. we did good. consider that in the design down at the bottom uh, <coughs> Dave how far up is this going 3,800 feet where is that about um, I think mm -hmm. Robert isn't I, I that the manhole that's just past the town office right yeah, it's not quite the plan was the last house on the system up there is uh, 549 Plains Road. 426 that. here. What is it here? 426. So <coughs> probably the one on the corner. I got a couple of questions. Uh, yeah. uh, <coughs> will this replacement of this line <coughs> extend the length of what it is serving right now, or is it just a, a replacement of what the existing line is? 
That's a great question. It's a it's a true replacement of what the existing line is, uh, but by putting it at the right depth, you should have the ability to extend it a little further or connect other properties in the future. We didn't go through and see how far you could extend it, um, but but they could always connect with a small pump station too. I think there was always concern that the line being at the wrong slope was going to create problems if they connected a few more homes to it. Because where it, where it ends now, there is, in, in my mind, there might be a future need for that service to be extended and whether this would be, you know, work right into it. Uh, I'm just curious, I guess. And, and another question I had was, has the funding been pretty much set up so that we know how we're going to pay for it? Well, we so earmarked Air ARPA money for right. this. And, and depending <clears throat> on what bids come in at, I mean, this Robert's estimate's a little bit higher than what we have for ARPA right now, but yeah. I think we'll know accurately. I mean, what, what a couple things, and correct me if I'm wrong, Robert, we don't have to do a Buy America on this, right? Correct. So through the town's ARPA funding, you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to um, follow some of the other provisions that work through, like, Dave's on the clean water thing. state revolving fund what they would require you to do today with that funding so it's a little it is a little bit simpler it allows for a, a little more straightforward procurement process with the contractors and um hopefully should simplify the amount of time it takes to do the project too and they don't have to follow so davis bacon said. wages either which usually jacks up the price oh, so, yeah. Yeah. so that's that's a good thing mm. is that the fed rate is that what it is yeah if we, you know that's what that is so. okay good so if if in the future this line was to be extended to accommodate further uh, down through that area, would this line that would be put in be uh, suitable to add more to, or would we be faced with changing the whole thing again if we wanted to make quite an expansion? No, you wouldn't have to change the whole thing again. Um, there's one, so as Dave mentioned, the last manhole is pretty close to the town office, and then it goes to a, a series of small diameter pipes, combination of six and four, all the way up to that last house. And so what we're doing is we're running a new eight inch main all the way to the end so that everybody's connected into the eight inch main at the appropriate slope. If you look at the plans, probably the only thing that you'd want to do um, in the future would be to maybe just sh shallow up that very last section of pipe that we have. So it's about 298 feet on the plan sheet C5. It makes the excavation a little bit deeper, but that might that might get you an additional couple of gravity connections to it. Um, we didn't do that because there's only one house connected to it, and I didn't want to run it at minimum slope with one house connected to it right mm -hmm. now. So that's really the only only thing that I would consider changing, but it's such a shallow excavation up there, it really shouldn't cost that much to put that last 298 feet in compared to the rest of the job. And if you look at that profile down through there, we did lower it in elevation a little bit um, and uh, cut through the hill a little bit more. That way we could make sure that we had um, adequate slope and you could get some increased connections if you wanted to in the future. It's at the end of the run, right there? Yep. Right to the end, right? Okay. Yeah, that, that's the last house that, that, that we're aware of that's connected to the system right there. Yep. And as Dave mentioned, if you follow that back, you'll see there's a manhole down back by the uh, by the town office. Yep. <clears throat> but if you look at that profile, part of the reason why some of it's expensive, some of it is pretty deep. Um, you know, it's 10 to 10 or more feet in excavation. You know, typical pipe excavation is 6 to 7 feet deep, mm -hmm. so it is a little... A little more complex for a section of that, which adds to the cost. Robert, I, I have one question for paving. I, I could look in this and figure it out. But I'm going to ask you: Are we doing curb to curb paving after, or are we trench paving? That's a good question. The estimate that I gave you just includes trench paving, mostly because there's going to be a small amount where we're in the road. So, if you imagine coming up around the corner. Uh, to make that work with the angles, the pipes end up getting out in the road a little bit, but most of the project is actually going to be off the road, which helps keep the cost down. Okay. That's good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And and just to be clear, we're putting new services to the right-of-way for every residence, and we're going to put an access clean-out there, which will clearly define ownership between the town of Pittsford and the 
and the private property owner and also for the town to know that they all the infrastructure that the town's responsible for was constructed and tested and, and meets all the requirements and is a sound pipe. Okay. Did we do we have to make a motion on this? Because we did we not already do when we um, set aside the ARPA money? Did we not already vote to put this out well, to bid? I, got, I do have the request for <coughs> to continue engineering services for for Otter Creek for. Um, bit in construction phase that's in there so we probably should have a motion for that and okay yeah i mean well you know once the bids come in we'll bring them to you and then the board will decide mm -hmm. what to do with that so okay as long as you're fine with us putting out to bid tomorrow yeah I i'd mean, like to make a motion um to accept this mm -hmm. from the otter creek engineering and move forward i'll second that all right all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Great, Thanks, Robert. Great, thank you. So we'll, we'll get it out to bid right away, and um, and then I'll come back to you all uh, when we have the bids, and we can hopefully have a good conversation then. All right. I'll probably give you a shout tomorrow. That sounds good. That sounds good, Dave. I'm going to be on the road a little bit, so probably the best time will be about noon. Okay, great. Uh, I should be sit, sitting in the airport then. <coughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good day. You too. Take good care. Day. Bye now. Um, approve spring road postings. Are these exactly the same as every year? Yeah. Well, as far as I know, Chad told me ah. they were. We actually picked the signs up when we were at our meeting at Trans last week. So okay. Yeah, nothing's changed. Oh, yep, have a good night. Yep, I know. Okay. All the fun stuff always clears the room, doesn't it? I know. The sewage talk. <laughs> That's exciting. Joe stays for the sewage dock. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. I'm just dirty. <laughs> <laughs> My head's always I set you up for that. I, I set know. you up for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to do anything, though, on the posting. That's just... Yeah, no, it's it's yeah. the same as every year. Same so every year. this yeah. is just weight limit for mud season. Um, do you guys want to just make a motion that we yeah. can post it just so we'd have it? I mean, I'll make a um, motion. Yep. Second. Any other further discussion about that? Any questions? Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Backhoe repair. Yeah. <laughs> so this was unexpected. And um, actually, Mark and I went and took a look at it today. Um, oh, did you? But um, yeah, that. Chad wrote it up pretty good here. The inner boom and the bucket to boom piston on the backhoe um, need repair. The inner boom, the metal actually broke at kind of a weak spot in, mm. in it. And um, it looked like it had been working its way for a while from the front. It was still pretty oxidized, and then when it cracked, it was done. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the piston went to the shop already. Um, they'll repair that, but the, the other part needs to be replaced. So... Um, the inner boom is well. The prices are on there, forty-five hundred bucks, um, and it'll take a little while for the parts to get here, as usual. But um, yeah. so it's over my spending limit, um, and we'll have to get a quote for what the repair is going to be too for the labor and stuff. So doesn't seem like we've had that machine that long. Eight years. It's it's a really bad design on the hull. Is it? Yeah, Is it? I went down and looked at it. It's just that that spot's made to break. Yeah, mm -hmm. they didn't do a very good That's job. Too bad. No, it, they poured like a hole in that in that boom part, and so it, it's already weak because there's a hole in it. And know? a very big stress yeah. point. Yeah. So it wasn't very good. No, it it broke right in the center of that ring. Of course, it make it better than it was new. No, this piece needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they can they can patch it to, for the short term, but. Right, right. Let's hope they can repl repair the uh, piston. Yeah. You know, because that when it broke, it took the piston out. And Bennett. Yeah. Can't, it can't be a humongous amount of hours on that machine. Uh, 3,300. 3, oh. Nice. It looks like cheap steel. It yeah. just wasn't a good engineering. <laughs> damn poor. Because I had the same question. That's why I went down and looked at yeah. it. Because I couldn't believe yeah, it. Yeah, I know. That's usually the strongest part, right? It's just not a good design. Right. You know, how they built that hole? Yeah. It's not like a deer or a cat. It's it's weird. Flimsy. I, I think we should really consider hard if we ever have to replace that, and not be using a JCB. Well, if we were to to uh, consider an excavator, that we'd still have still have the need to have a backhoe, wouldn't we? 
Well, I think you need the extra loader, you know, because we have our loader, but you have to be able to load trucks. Right. And if one goes down, you have to have a way right, to load right, those trucks. Right, so yeah. I don't know. He probably can make it go along here, but I think a, maybe a smaller excavator would be safer and smarter for some of the work on the sides of the road. Yeah. So, and, you know, the biggest problem is the excavator don't move around town like the backhoe does. And you got a tra they got a trailer. If so we got one less than 10,000 pounds, we could trailer it with the trailer we have. So, um, yeah. I, I think it's something to consider, but this well, this was really just a poor design, I think. Yeah. yeah. So the, the problem now is we're, we don't have anything until we get apart. So, right. fingers yeah. crossed, nothing happens. So yeah. Right. Well, he, they are going to try to do a repair on this, yep. that quote. So, we, we will have something. Yeah. Soon. So it'll at least be back on until we replace it. Yeah. But it does. I, it looks one of these jobs where we, when you fix it, it's going to be a weak point. Yeah. yeah. So they're not no going to be. Able, you're not going to be able to crank on a stone. No way of correcting the problem from the beginning. Just the way that design yeah, is, you're going to have right. to replace that. I yeah. think, Joe. I, I, I think what we need to get from JCB, and I mentioned this today, is maybe some assurances or warranty on that part for a little longer than three thousand hours. Yeah, it's not much hours. Very little hour at. You need to guarantee a little bit more on the steel for mm. five thousand dollar piece of steel. And one thing, you know, with JCB, we can't even get it serviced in Vermont anymore. So you know, that's another thing to consider down the road when we're looking yeah. at replacing it. Is local, you know, repair places is definitely worth it. I forget when when we bought that whether we saved a fair bit of money over some other maybe over deer or I something. I think so. I kind of forgot. I mean, I was here when, the, when yeah. that thing was purchased, and it just don't seem right that it's failed as quick. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think an off-brand without a local dealer that's really going to back it up should be even considered, to be honest right. with you. But right. anyway, <coughs> you need a motion. Yep. Um, now, in the piston, we'll see how it gets repaired. Not necessarily we have to buy a piston. Chad said he thinks they can take it apart and just replace the rod and put everything back that's together. So, yep. so we may not be into... The full cost of a piston. Correct. Right. There's a mo I have a, a motion that we cover these expenses. Okay. With uh, one caveat, is there anything we could claim on insurance? No. Probably not. Anyway, no. yeah, that's my motion. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah. Second it. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Zoning issue. So junk ordinance. So Jeff asked that this be put in the packet. Um, he's looking for authorization to issue tickets and we thought he already had it but he says he hasn't so as you know we've had a couple issues around town with junk and the junk actually encroaching on our right away which chief warfel and i have dealt with on one property a few times already um so but we need to enforce more so um so but just to clarify um he doesn't, does he, he doesn't need our okay to issue tickets, no? Well, like I said, we thought he already had it. So, okay. Um, maybe he's just making you aware of it. Oh, okay. So he's not asking for... <coughs> well, he does because he says he requests that the health officer... Well, that's... says, I request the board to specially authorize me to issue notice of violations, which was enforced in environmental court. Well, the health officer already has can do a health order anyway so well that's why i'm confused that's really not our purview but <laughs> well he technically is appointed by the board so you you know like just make a motion to that's fine yeah i mean if he's it's so it's, I, I, i'll make a motion <coughs> that jeff handle whatever rules are on the book in this area and do it in a regular fashion correct yes and uh, yeah second that okay um, all in favor say aye. 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 It's, hard, aye. it's hard to believe we need new rules if we can no. well, just I don't think use yeah. the ones we have. Well, that's what we just need to be enforcing the ones we have. and um, I think we're kind of looking the other way a little bit, and I think some of these are really a, a real issue. They've come up numerous times. Right. First time they come up, I think we really have to handle it. It's the right thing for the neighbors if right. there's a problem. So. Right. Well, well just, this, need this to, we need to be consistent and fair. Ongoing battle for yeah. quite a while. There's a few so. with, a, with a couple of yeah. spots. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. One is you know once it gets in the right of way, I'm I have an issue with that because that's yeah. well, dangerous. that's yeah, yeah. it is right. yeah. That's so weird. right away and also a health issue. Yeah. Where we've right. got garbage piled up yep. over there. Yeah. Yep. You know 
Somebody's not going to want a rat moving in their house next yeah. door. If it's no. we, had, we had one over on the east side of town that, that Rich actually did a real good job with. So Yes. You know, um, yeah. Yep. They need think they need to work together and handle yep. it. Yep. Mm -hmm. that's and follow goes. up because yep. sometimes they start to, you know. So. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um. And lastly, anything on orders? Drop <laughs> Yeah, I had a couple of questions here. <coughs> oh, where the heck am I here? Here. The, uh, <coughs> there was an well, item number 2562 was uh, uh, under time. Was eleven hundred and forty-two dollars. So that was for one of the Durangos. Must have been some significant repairs made. Yeah, I can tell you what's what that one is. Suspension and transmission. Yeah. Is that one of the ones with the tip em issue that might have been? They had what issue? <laughs> it's this thing called a tip em. I, I don't know if it's like the PCV valve or whatever, but when it doesn't work, nothing works. Oh. And we've had issues with it before. I guess it's been ongoing. Um, I'll tell you in a minute. And that would be in the suspension or transmission? Yeah, it's a total something performance module that like controls the ECM. Yeah, right. is, so it in the is it on the transmission? So here, I'll tell you what no, happened. No, actually, I think it's under the hood, but it controls both. So this the one was. Transmission and the engine. This one was a 17 Durango. It needed rear suspension, subframe bushings. That was shop time. Transmission pan fluid, shop time of removal and repair of transmission pan gasket hardware, um, e EVAP valve pig pigtail, and shop time. So I should give it a new lease on life, maybe. <laughs> I hope, hope so. so. <laughs> it's a Dodge. They're, gonna, they're not low on miles either. So it's a Dodge. It's going to have transmission trouble. So that's just a matter. Of yep. Another question I had was. Uh, uh, item 0825, uh, that one there was uh, Highway Truck 5, BSI repairs, it was 3600 and something, so that must have been another significant. So that was the wastewater water truck, actually the, har the, the um, fuse box caught on fire. And we found out that there was an issue that when whoever put the plow frame and stuff in didn't really secure wires the right way and they shorted oh out boy. and put the truck on fire. That wow. was Iroquois that put that on. Yes, that's oh my was. goodness. And Earl's did the repair? Yes. So it should be proper. Okay. Yep. Oh boy. All right. That was the truck they were washing off today, right? Yes, that was the one. We just got it back today, actually. So. so Pardon my stupidity, but who's thunder towing? And there was another From significant Brandon. repair. Uh, that was item uh, 0830 uh, fire truck uh, maintenance. Yeah. That's $24 and $24 and change. Yeah. That must have been another. He does quite a bit of work on our significant repair. I've seen it before. Oh, yeah. the 0830, the fire truck. It must have been. That was 2400 that was the that had to go to New Hampshire for. Is that the ladder truck? I can't remember now what part was on that, but that had to go to New Hampshire for something. I'll tell you. That's the Eaton, right? Mm -hmm. It just kind of caught my eye because they were fairly, fairly heavy duty repair bills. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'm um, starting to learn that if it's less than a thousand dollars, it's probably not done right. Because everything is uh, seems to be a thousand dollars lately. Okay. Well, what was that guy's name? Was it Endon or Eaton? Eaton. E e Edward. Edward. Eaton. Eaton. Vendor number eight thirty. Do something with the transmission or the suspension. Doesn't say anything on it here. Well, we got a whole list of stuff. Let's see. Maintenance. That's what it says. <laughs> oh. 
Heat and Fuller makes transmission. Yeah, that's uh, the guys Front name. suction valve, oh. clean lubricant, brave valve, front suction plumbing, test valves properly for open and close. So this sounds like it had to do with the complete over. With the um, when those valves all be for the certification of it. Yes, them. that's what they. That's what for. I was thinking yeah. of. Yeah, I think. That's it. I think Tom said that was going to happen. I think he made a comment yeah. on that before. But a lot of valve replacement here, so yeah, like one valve was seven hundred bucks, one was four hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. Does it say one truck is? That's all I. Engine have. number twenty-four. Is that pumper? I think so. <coughs> they have well, to be that many valves in it, it would they be. have to yeah. be certified. Yeah. Some of that fire equipment has to be checked over. Has to get certified. Yeah. You can't use it. I mean, well, so we just actually did. I might have told you this the last meeting. Chief Hempel came to me and asked if I could get the league down here to do um, a walkthrough to see if we, how our OSHA compliance was because he had heard that there were surprise visits happening around the state. So Wade Major came down and did walk through, and there were just a couple, some small stuff, but one of the sort of larger ones was the container that they keep their air in. And it was out. It was not in compliance. So we actually found a used one. Um, there's a place down in Massachusetts that it's does a storage those. place for the air tanks. Is that yeah, what it is? Yeah, yeah. So it's the kind of cylinders. a big, kind of a big deal if we get yeah. dinged for it. So, um, mm -hmm. but we found one, and I think it's like 2,500 bucks. So they're gonna, they're just going through it now, and they'll. I don't they're know whether OSHA works with municipalities, but in our business, <coughs> we invited OSHA to come in at one point and check us out and make recommendations yep. and it kind of gives you a, a get out of jail free card yeah they give, they give they you, give a, leg you up. a free pass for a while <laughs> while doing that. Leg up well leg. and it helped our workman's comp yeah I bet yep. it did. a little bit we have we have once a month we have a little short training session which is good for you know helps our comp rate yep. a little bit Mm. The comp I actually had the guy start doing the. Remember when they used to do like tailgate talk? That was a big thing years ago for highway departments. So the league actually has these 15 minute things that the guys are doing now. They're getting together some morning for 15, 20 minutes, going over this and actually signing that they've you know, been part of it. So Sean and Chad have been really good with that. Um, but Wade from the league, that's, that's why I call them because they're all, most of those the adjusters and things there have worked for OSHA or, you know, no. So. He came down and actually I'm going to have him come down again and go through the rest of our buildings just to make right. sure that we're good. Because, you know, they'll get you on stupid things like forgetting to initial the fire extinguishers once a month or, yeah. you know, so um, Wade's good with it. He's pretty picky, which we like. Well, so. if you work with them, they give you some yep. kind of a little free time. Yeah, we had some electrical things down there, just some GFIs and stuff that needed to be replaced. So yeah. we've got someone coming next week to right. go through that. So, yeah, you know, just... Some Better than OSHA coming in. Yeah, that's why we're trying to prevent that. Some some tanks that should be stored outside that were inside, you know, things like that. So, but you know, we're trying to be proactive with it. All right. Well, if there's no other questions on the orders. We can sign those. Thank you. I know I drove back from Connecticut today, so I've been sitting too long. Yeah, I just <laughs> that would be an overnight for me. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to go to Connecticut and back. Oh, no, it's only like four hours, three and a half, four hours. Right, but with right. me having hardware and that chronic pain, I have oh. to stop periodically, yep. so that four hours turns into six hours. Yeah, I hear you. I have a whole new appreciation for lumbar support. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sit in those chairs at all. <laughs>
Mm. Heated seats are awesome. Yeah. yeah. I use them even in the summertime. Yeah, <laughs> my wife's like that too. And they kind of like, what the heck's going on here? Am I having hot flashes? <laughs> I just think I just got a different car and actually it's heat and cool. Yeah. Like my Jeep did. Kind of excited about that. You know, on a it's hot kinda day. It's kind of weird when you hit the those cold. cold really, yeah. You don't sit on this really hot, hot seat. Yeah. It does make a difference. Mm. Can't keep it on too long, though. Then right. And start getting sore again. Start fighting it up. Yep. And that was actually what I read about the TPIM thingy or whatever. I was looking at the Jeep Wranglers we ended up buying a uh, Traverse instead, but one of the things, the TPIM or whatever yeah. it was, they said that thing goes, kiss your vehicle goodbye. We've had to replace it. won't do anything unless it's replaced. Yeah, we've had to replace one of the Wranglers quite a few times, I guess. Yeah, and then they, they have found, a tendency of going bad. Well, the last time it was in there was another wiring issue that, so hopefully this is done now that it was not, I, I don't know a lot about the electronics. It's really your, your brain. The right. computer, I had to do one in my mother's jet. It was $4,000. Yeah. Unbelievable. Sheesh. Yeah. Get bumper to bumper. $100,000. <laughs> oh, yeah? Nice. I just keep buying Toyota. <laughs> Yeah. That was my idea. Uh. Go along with what people want. So. All right. Well, I think we're done. That's, that's it. it. Yep.